Hey everyone, this is Lisa from Life in Layouts and today I'm going to be using a page map sketch from June of 2016. I pulled out this photo play collection called MVP Golf and I'm super excited because I did pair it with some simple stories embellishment pieces. These photos I planned using my spreadsheet and it is linked below. You do have access to it, you just have to copy it and paste it into an Excel document or into a Google Sheet, which is what I use. This is one of those that I'm super excited that I planned it out because looking at them, I would have never realized how I was supposed to do this. I do go ahead and cut down the photos. I have a bunch of these two by three photos. When I was looking at the sketch and planning this out, I thought I could cut these two by threes down to a two by two, but it doesn't work out and I have to switch up the sketch a little bit. I also cut down my photo to match the sketch, the three by four photo, and I actually end up having to reprint it. When I purchased this collection, I did get it from the Paper Attic Crafty Buy-In group, and that is a Facebook group. I will also link that below. I really loved the collection because I was like, oh, I have all of these miniature golf photos that I need to use, and there's not really any golf paper. So I thought that it would work. I was able to already get one layout just using the collection, but that was pretty much it. Everything else is really related to golf, not really mini golf. So you can see here that I'm trying to figure out the placement of these smaller photos, thinking that maybe I can work it in with the two by threes instead of a two by two. And I was struggling with it. So I was like, well, let me pull out some flip flops and see if I have any flip flops that are two by three. But I did not. I don't think that they are that small. I also realized at this point I did need to have that photo at a three by four because I was going to need to use a flip flop. So I went ahead and just pulled out that white cardstock that I have on my desk that just literally has three by four on it because I need it to help me cut the pictures and paper down to three by four size. So I got everything where I thought it would work and then realized that there was another picture in my envelope. And so that threw me all off. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take a break from the pictures and try to figure this out. And I was gonna use this beautiful yellow as my background. I measured my photos using my T-square ruler and then I cut the paper. Then I move my photos down and immediately realize that I cut it too short because I cut the paper the exact size of the photos when I knew that I had to have a banner strip in the middle and I had to have space around the sides, the yellow was out. I went ahead and pulled out this navy color and this cardstock is a part of the collection. Like I obviously purchased it separately. What Photoplay was trying to do was provide some solids similar to like the petite prints from Doodlebug and the dots and stripes from Echo Park, but it is literally just cardstock. And it's great because it's the exact same color cardstock as the paper, but I have a ton of cardstock. And so I kind of wish they would have done more of a petite print or a tone on tone. Once I get the navy background on the layout, I then start to work on my photos trying to figure it out. And the sketch calls for the four by six and a three by four on the left hand side and then a three by four on the right hand side. And so basically it is 12 inches of photos and three by four cards, but it does span both the left and right hand side of the layout. Once I realized that I could cut down two of the photos small, they're like super tiny. So instead of them being a two by three, they're actually a one and a half by three. And that's gonna be on the right hand side of the layout. And then I really just paper shaved or photo shaved in this instance, the photos on the right hand side so that I could get the exact amount of spacing so that I could fit all of those photos. Once I finally got all that figured out, then I was able to cut out the blue paper for the right hand side of the layout. And I will tell you that I struggled with this a lot. I was so frustrated with this layout at this point. There were multiple times that I made just mistakes, lots of math. I made this joke on my Instagram probably a little while ago about another layout that I was doing about how we joked back in, you know, middle school and high school where we told our math teachers that we would never use math. I am in a field where I do not use math on a regular basis, but I will tell you the amount of math that I have to do and f calculations and figuring things out by measuring them is far beyond anything that I would ever have thought of when I was in high school and middle school doing my math problems. I did go ahead and mount the four by six photo on the right hand side on that yellow cardstock. So I was able to bring that yellow in. There is very little yellow in that striped paper. And that was really why I wanted to bring that yellow in because I really wanted to 
have that contrasting color. So, I mean, I will tell you that the, the yellow is like maybe a quarter of an inch on the stripe paper. It's so super tiny. So I cut my paper down and I cut four inches for the right hand side and eight inches for the left hand side and realize immediately that I cut the wrong size. Luckily I had an another piece that I had already cut out because I thought I was going to need two pieces to span across both sides of the layout, but I actually only end up using one. So that was nice that I didn't have to cut another piece. So these photos were taken on the cruise that I went on a couple years ago for my 40th birthday. And on the cruise, they had a little putt-putt area. And all of these photos that are on the bottom are all of the different holes in the putt-putt game. So it had a nautical theme. So there was clams and dolphins and sand castles and birds and a lighthouse and a boat. I really wanted to include that on the layout because it is super cute. Over on the far left hand side I pulled out the paper that had the bunch of T's on it and I added that to the far left and then I did use my border punch on the yellow cardstock to provide a little border. I did use mowed lawn to ink up the edges of all of the paper. You know, I haven't been using my border punches a lot, but the last couple of layouts, like this one and another one that's going up shortly, I used my border punches on and I was like, man, I really like the way that this looks. Like that yellow paper over on the far left was really cute with that little wavy border. I really like that border. It's like a wavy border. And so it brings in that like water feel that this putt putt place had. So it was really cool that I added that piece to it. So have you guys ever done that? Like you have tools. I love my border punches. I use them often, but then I kind of go through spurts where I don't use them. And then when they come back, I'm like, man, I really do like those things. I'm glad I still have them or I'm glad they're still hanging around. So let me know in the comments below. Do you guys have things like that where you bring back a tool and you're like, wow, this is a, a really cool tool. So once I get all of the background pieces down, which is really just that navy paper, as well as the tea paper and the yellow paper, then I go ahead and start adding in my photos. I'm gonna use my T-square ruler to measure, and I believe it was like one and a half inches from the top and bottom. And the reason I did that was because that paper in the middle that have all of the golf clubs on it, overlaps the striped paper quite a bit because of the big humps or waves or scallops, whatever you want to call them, on the border punch that I used. I wanted to make sure that I didn't misconfigure it and I actually did it right this time. Like it, it really, it came out nice. So I go ahead and put down the striped paper first because I knew that the golf club paper was going to overlap it quite a bit, but then I did put it down crooked. So I had to take the stripe paper up and then tried to put it back down over the golf club paper and pull it back up, but it was just too big. So the golf paper had to come back up as well and then lay that back down and got everything straight. This point, I had my three by four card still because I still hadn't ran to the store to pick up the reprints of the photos that I had cut. So I'm still using kind of that space or that white cardstock uh, in that spot. I did use my X-Acto knife to cut down the photo and the paper to make sure that they lined up correctly. On the right hand side I went ahead and added that green 3x4 card that says 4 as well as the stripe paper, the golf paper, and then the two photos on the right hand side. Now I am super excited because I was able to get 12 photos on the base of this layout. I did end up using a flip flap so that added two more photos. So there are 14 photos on this layout. Now granted, most of them are in that two by three size, so they are kind of small, but I think that it's pretty awesome that I got that many photos. I did put the photo on the right up on Fun Foam as well. Now this is where I went to the Simple Stories Family Fun Collection, and you can see those little bits and pieces at the bottom. I love the Family Fun Collection. It has a ton of different things in that collection. Like there's bowling and obviously mini golf and other fun things that you could do with your family. But the paper in that collection does not work with the items that are in the collection, if that makes sense. Like the ephemera pieces don't match the paper. There is no golf paper whatsoever in that collection, which is very frustrating because there's also not a lot of B-side paper in that collection. So I was super excited when I made the realization that I could pull those pieces from the Simple Stories Family Fun collection and use it 
in other pattern papers. So I'm hoping that I can find these smaller collections like this photo play collection because there's really, I think, only like six sheets of paper in it. There's not a whole lot of embellishment. This collection is obviously geared towards regular golf, not mini golf. So definitely not a lot of mini golf collections, but the colors work. I mean, they're not exactly the same, but I feel like they go well enough. The pieces that I end up using on the far left-hand side, I have a mini golf world like playing card, which you would get when you go play mini golf. I also added a golf club with a little tee, as well as like a little windmill that you would normally see at like a mini golf place. That's on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, there's like a little green area with the flag and the golf ball, as well as a little sticker that says mini golfin. I did look through the collection to try to find some other pieces. I did find one other sticker that says terrific. So super excited that I was able to pull in those pieces and make it work for this layout. And I do have a couple more mini golf layouts that I need to complete. And so I know that I can still pull in this photo play collection as well as the family fun collection. I did make it to the store and was able to get the photos reprinted that I had cut incorrectly. So I went ahead and added that flip flop to it. And I'm going to put that over on the far left hand side. And then like I said, I did add that main photo on the right hand side up on fun foam. My title is going to be tea time fun. And I found these really cool green stickers. And I really liked the end. I like the way that it whooshed off to the end. And I thought I was going to add it to the end of the photo. But then I was like, I don't like the way the N kind of sits on the white and then the F and the U sit on the navy. So I moved it over and I moved it up a little bit. What I'm going to end up doing is cutting a piece of the golf club paper and adding it underneath to title. So the title is kind of sitting on that paper, covering up that weird, awkward space that's there now. So really, I just kind of measure it just enough where I'm able to tuck it under that yellow piece of paper and it looks really nice with my title there. So I do pull out my glue press to get all of those pieces down and I feel like my head has been in a lot of videos lately and I'm really sorry about that. Most of the time I'm able to cut it out. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I cannot get my camera angle right for you guys that my head's not in it. No matter what I do, I can't figure it out. I've moved the camera around a bazillion times. My camera is mounted on the wall so it's not like there's a whole lot of places that it could be. <laughs> I just really need to play with it a little bit more. So I did pull out my color boxes in a blue, yellow, and green and I added enamel dots to each one of the clusters. And then that is it for this video. Here is my final layout as well as some close-ups. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to spend it with me watching me put this layout together for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already and you want to see more double page layout inspiration, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope that you have a scrappy day.